Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From The Page. And I was not planning on doing another video this week, but hey, uh, I've just been enjoying seeing all of the Garbagas Truth or Dare videos that have just came out. Uh, they are so much fun to watch and they are very, very funny to watch too. So I was like, all right, all right, I'm doing another video. I can't wait till next week to dive into this. So this is the Garbagas Truth or Dare tag. Uh, there are questions, and if you don't want to answer any of the questions, there's a set of dares that you can do. Um, so let's just get right into this. The first question is, how would you personally describe trashy books? So this is where I actually take a split from Criminali, because Criminali, in his uh, definition of garbage, uh, is a lot about how a film is, how something is marketed and how it's uh, received critically and things like that. And those are all very good uh, denominators as to what's trash. But for me, what's trash is the actual content of the book. So when I am talking about a trashy book, what I think of is a book that's basically just a B movie. It's just for entertainment. It's not going for anything deeper and is just a fun time to read and enjoy. Something like, you know, I recently read uh, Splattersaurus by Judas Sonnet. That is 100% a trashy B-movie book. It's even right there in her description of it uh, as you're reading it. When you open it up, she's like, oh, this is inspired by sci uh, campy sci-fi movies and things like that. And it's just a good time. It's just fun. It's not going for anything deeper. Um, so that's why I never have like full categories for trash. Trash is only to me defined after I read it. So uh, what's interesting about Garbagas is a lot of the books I read probably will not be considered trash in my book uh, because I don't consider something trash until after the fact. It's about content, not the marketing. Next up, what's the trashiest book you own? Okay, so I, you know, a bit of a setup here. I'm not going to do anything controversial, guys. Don't worry. I just got to, you know... I gotta use I gotta use this because every time I touch this book I get set on fire so I need to get a little bit of protection so I have to use my uh, you know my winter scarf to pick this book up okay it's it hurts even though even sometimes when I pick it up without it so let's see oh god ah 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 it burns it burns it's the Bible ah get it away get it away yeah I don't I I only own the Bible because. For some reason, when somebody introduced me to the apartment when I bought it, it wasn't clean. So they had to get someone in to come and do like a last minute clean of my apartment before I was allowed to move in. And this person, for no reason, they must have looked at me and been like, this bitch needs Jesus. Uh, they put a Bible like in one of my cupboards after they cleaned everything out. And I'm like, uh, is this the apartment's Bible now? Like, what do I do with this Bible? I don't want this Bible. It's just sitting there. I ain't gonna read it. It's very, it's trashy. Um, you know, anyways, uh, I know, I know. I picked something that wasn't controversial and won't give me any slack for it. But yes, the Holy Bible is the trashiest book I own. Um, question number three. What is the trashiest situation you've ever been in? Oh, oh God. I'm not a smart man, uh, and as such, I have had many, many trashy situations in my life. Uh, the 20s, uh, my 20s, and the 1920s. If I was in the 1920s, I'm sure this would all also happen. Uh, but my 20s were a uh, wild time, so to speak. So uh, the, the trashy situation, I went to go visit the uh, amazing uh, city of Chicago, Illinois, uh, I had never been to Chicago. It was a it was a nice thing. I was actually there for a get together for a podcast I used to be involved in and used to listen to, which is actually the shirt I'm wearing right now. Um, I'm no longer with that podcast. I no longer really talk to a lot of people who I was involved with then. But you know, I went there for a meetup, meetup fans, because I was one of the people who guested on the podcast. It was like this big thing. So we, they, we they rented out like half of this bar so that everyone could get together, have a few drinks, and have a good time. So I was there with someone I had a crush on, and I was trying to impress her. And here's the thing. If you are a person who ever thinks that maybe I have a crush on you, just know you have uh, too much power. Because I get bad. I get bad. So I there was this situation where I was like, we were looking at all these photos around the room, and there were all these like really old, crusty-looking white dudes. And I just like go, and I'm like... I'm just drinking the beer. I'm like, you know, trying to impress her. Be like, I'm cool and punk. And I'm like, don't you just want to 
Throw a beer at those old pictures of these old white men? Ugh, one of these days I'm just gonna throw a beer at it. And, you know, that's not gonna impress anyone. Uh, so she is like, uh, you're not, you wouldn't do that. You're all talk. You would never. Yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, you're gonna throw a beer? Yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. Now, a logical person would just take the L uh, and go, yeah, you're right. I was never, because I was never attending it. I'm a, I'm a rule follower at, at heart, unfortunately. I won't be punk, but I'm not punk enough in my heart to fully represent the punk lifestyle. Um, but at, at this case, I guess I've had enough alcohol, and uh, I did it. <laughs> it was a pretty crowded bar. Luckily, nobody around was, like, anywhere near getting, like, hurt when the glass... <laughs> shattered on the floor but i did this thing where i fake tripped near the painting and it was a bad fake trip like it was not realistic at all it was like oh and i like, <laughs> like i like whipped the thing of this mug of beer and this photo of an old white man who he could i don't know anything about this man i was just trying to be punk and be like yeah take down the authority um and you know i did it uh, she laughed. She thought it was hilarious. I didn't, we're not in a relationship, so it didn't impress her. It was more of a like, oh, what? Why did you do that, you insane person? I can't believe you did that. And then everyone was like, uh, sir, are you okay? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm just tripping, you know. Uh, had a little bit too much to drink, you know. And like, all the people, like, you can just see this person they're like, these fucking guys, I hate this, I hate my life, I hate my job. And I feel really bad about that. Um, so if you've ever thought I was a smart person, uh, just keep in mind that if ever I have a crush on somebody, uh, I will do something stupid in a way to try to impress them. Uh, and it's bad. It's a bad thing to do. Uh, you shouldn't do it. Uh, and I do. I do do it. So yeah, that was probably the trashiest situation I've ever been in. Uh, although there's plenty. I am a, a, a trash uh in terms of my early 20s. Oh God. Oh God. Uh, so the next one is, have you ever read a bike, a bike, Ooh. have you ever read a, a book so spicy that you cease to be the master of your domain? Hi, parents. I know you watch these videos. As such, I won't. I'm not going to answer that. Uh, next up, which book has the best smut scene you've ever read? Well, this one's easy. This is Long Arm and the Sheep War, which is this uh, I this <laughs> this cassette that I read for Garb August 1.5. Uh, and this scene is not actually good. Like, it's very, very, very bad. But it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, and I, I will link my Garb August 1.5, um, like, vlog where you can go and actually listen to it because I play a little snippet of it. And it's this guy putting on the worst fake voice. And he's like, oh, Mr. Longarm, oh, you are so handsome and big. And it's, like, the worst voice I've ever heard. And it's so fucking funny. It's amazing. It is uh, perfect. So yeah, that is the best, funniest smut scene I've ever read. Number three. Have you ever given or received a trashy book as a gift? If so, what was the book and what was their reaction? So I gave, uh, just recently, I, I think technically as I'm uh, you know, recording this video, it might be actually being delivered. Uh, I gave Kelsey from Slime and Slashers all of my uh, Richard Lehman books, and she seemed ecstatic. And I read a few of those, and I'm like, woof. Okay, yeah, you, you take them. <laughs> they're, they're yours. <laughs> they're yours, Kelsey, all yours. <laughs> she seemed like, you know, she's gonna enjoy them. And that's good. Someone has to. I mean, it's Richard Lehman. And the last one is, did you ever read any trashy books from your parents' shelf as a kid? Yes. Uh, mostly, uh, my mom owned a lot of Stephen King. Uh, and yeah, Stephen King is pretty trashy. Like, it depends on the king, but uh, I specifically remember stealing The Stand from uh, my parents' shelves and reading that one. Uh, because, yeah, that was, The Stand is a great book, but it's also a very trashy book. Like, it's, it is like uh, that midpoint of King where it's like super trashy, but there's also some really good writing in there as well. And it's like this very interesting commingling of the two where it's, it's trash and it's also like got some like pretty great moments in it. So yeah, I definitely was uh, sneaking off uh, the stand as well. Um, so the, uh, 
I guess I'll do one of the dares because I technically I did not answer it to the fullest extent of the smut scene. Um, but it's uh, show a book you own but wouldn't read in public. Well, that was the Bible. So I wouldn't read that in public. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm not taking anyone. I mean, if you're you want to be trashy in public, I mean, oh, power to you. Um, hope you guys had a great day and uh, toodaloo.